does have six cylinders in line and although it's a very old tractor, I love that sound. tractor out of Mannheim that was shipped to North America but only to Canada. Uh, the Canucks they always bought some of the uh, Bulldogs even before the war and they had the John Deere lands but the 920 then was the first one they uh, went to the States. So we just got the 710 didn't we? Yeah we got that was yes, yesterday again. released. Really? Yeah, they, yeah I think this, this tractor was the one that was uh, scanned for the, uh, for the game. Yeah. <laughs> So the exact one, yeah. Can I can I touch it? Yes, yes, sure. Just go ahead. <laughs> it won't fall apart. But you, you, you can, can touch it. The apart. other one you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Only him will get it. <laughs> and you see here uh, the, in 1972 we introduced the SGB caps in on the 30 series uh, cap uh, tractors out of Waterloo. In Mannheim, we first had in 1975 the so-called OPU Operators Protection Unit. It was made by a Danish company, it was not John Deere made. And we had uh, them exclusively for a couple of years for Mannheim made tractors, but then you could see them also on uh, some other European tractors. And uh, so we decided to adopt the SG cap, we called them SG2 then for the Mannheim tractors. In 1981, like you see it on this tractor here. You see this was a tractor with this uh, hydraulic front wheel drive that was not really beloved by European farmers, yeah, because it's not as powerful as a mechanical front wheel drive. Ah. It was actually the rear axle of a combine as front axle of a tractor. You have a very tight turning radius, you have a high ground clearance, but it does not compare, like you see really muddy spots, it does not compare to the mechanical front wheel drive. First version, that, uh, it had no transmission, that means you crank it one direction to go forward, you crank it the other direction to go backward. So you see the arrow on the flight on the other side, it, if you throw it in the direction of the arrow, it's forward and counterwise it's backward. 6K, or it takes clicks, and then we have the one, the black one back there, it's actually the same track. The one was the road version with solid rubber tires, we can go closer to it also. The other one was the arable version. But um, when land started also to sell tractors like in Australia, yeah, there was a demand for radiators because sometimes you have to walk quite a while to find some wood. And so this was one of the early uh, radiator tractors, this one here. And in the 1930s, they started to have air tires, a little bit later than in uh, North America. And when they had air tires, it could increase tractor speed. And these tractors, the so-called Isle Bulldog, they were uh, designed not for the field, but rather similar to what a semi-truck does today, so they were uh -huh. rather road tractors. And you have a very automotive design, with the full length uh, fenders. Well, even in the United States now, we, we always can call it tractor trailer. Yeah. yeah. We just restored it, we, we are still waiting for the, the new roof, it's a convertible. Lanz factory, as you see, Getafe written on it, Lanz Iberica, that's yeah. the, um, it's close to uh, Madrid. And this is a vineyard tractor with narrow tracks. So I've heard that the Blue Lanz is uh, very loud. It is, it is. 
<laughs> these are even louder here. Oh. That's a 10.4 liter engine. That means you have a, a water bucket as a um, <coughs> piston, uh, one cylinder, two stroke engine, and due to this is all water tank, and when the tank is nearly empty, it's like if you have a guitar, it's, uh, you give it the resonance, and then it's increasing or uh, magnifying the, uh, the sound, or amplifying the sound. Okay. This one is a motor that was actually made out of two different tractors, and this you can see. Today you may order the plastic steering wheel, or you have the luxury uh, leather trim. Mm -hmm. On the land products, before the war, you had either steel, but it might be cold in winter, or your wooden steering wheel. And this is a, a pre-war tractor with a post-war engine. Well, this is a semi-diesel. You crank it on gasoline, for gasoline is easier to crank. Mm -hmm. And when the engine is hot, you can switch to, di uh, to diesel. And when they um, told the customers, you do not need a new tractor, just purchase a new engine, and we retrofit this engine into uh, your old tractor. This is what today we call it a field kit, and uh, this is one of these uh, converted tractors. Well, this is still originally it's a post-war model with uh, battery lights here and here, but uh, still with the Wattpad engine. But it takes about half an hour at least to crank the tractor, so you should sleep a bit longer if you use an engine like this. It was in 1950 this model here, the narrow one, and this was the first tractor made by Lanz that we would call today a CUT, a compact utility tractor. We didn't use that name then. It was uh, designed for these very, very small farms that you have what we call sundowners sometimes. So for the people that are working in office, they work in a factory and then they have a couple acres that the farm and many of these people in these days in the 1950s are still used horses. And here, the advertising literature is trying to convince them that it's cheaper or less costly to use a tractor than two horses. <laughs> what they do not tell the customer is, um, if you own horses, you can breed new horses. You cannot breed tractors. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and there was also written in the booklet, but it's not shown here, you have to consider the horse uh, needs hay the whole year. The tractor's burning fuel only when working. <laughs> a plow that was where uh, John Deere started with in, uh, 19, uh, in 1837 was making plows. And uh, this is a utility carrying vessel, as we call it. I think um, there was one company in, in the States, Alice, Alice made uh, similar tractors all in the States. And this version of tractors you found them by many makes in. Um, in Europe in the 1950s, 19, uh, 1960s. The platform could be taken away and then you, uh, you could mount the implements in front of you. Because there was no auto steer, so you didn't have to plow the whole day looking, looking back to so everything in front. And the frame with this crack here, you can counter steer the frame. So when you make like potato ridges on a slope, you do not have to hold the steering wheel, you just put the frame against the slope and then fix it and it's running against the slope. Cool. Wow. The largest tractor horsepower wise that was made by Lanz in Mannheim, well this one here, the 6006, was a 60 horsepower tractor, still one cylinder. And <coughs> Also, uh, you get a very exclusive uh, uh, overview uh, right now. It's the same tractor. If you put them one next to the other, you cannot see the difference. <laughs> but uh, the Spanish um, standard would be to measure without the pump and all that thing. The German standard is to measure with the pump. I think this makes a 5 uh, HP. It's like S I E and D I N uh, on um, These two tractors are uh, US made. The Model A uh, was a most successful tractor joint here made with more than 300,000 tractors made. That's still an unstyled. Later we have the one with the hood covering the engine and the steering. Um, uh, and then it was, it was called the styled uh, tractors. It was also a, a, not, um, the front, the white front axle version. And the launch uh, version was uh, the covers on it, like streamlined tractor. 
and the first diesel tractor made by Germany was a Model R. So we had a small gasoline engine that cranks the diesel, mm. and the exhaust from the gasoline engine is always uh, is preheating the diesel engine for easier cranking. What is the uh, the badge on the very front there? Uh, well, the, there was the so-called Marshall Plan or ERP, European Recovery Plan, in the ni 1950s. And the, the US government was providing aid to European governments to rebuild Europe after the war. And <clears throat> the money was also, or the aid was also offered to Eastern Europe. But Stalin is rather starving than having the, the, the class enemy helping us. Mm -hmm. But uh, Tito in Yugoslavia, he was a bit more flexible. He said, okay, the tractors work fine, ship the tractors and, and keep your politics. And this tractor was running in Yugoslavia, and one of our uh, colleagues, he once spotted it behind a barn during his vacation, and so we, we brought the, uh, the tractor here. It's beautiful. Did you even have the sticker? Yeah. Did you get the sticker, Gohan? Coming in for it right after you. Yes. Hmm. I like that very much. It's beautiful. And you see here the Farm last the of here. the Lance Bulldogs that they're um, already shipped to the customers under John Deere colors. Yeah. So they're just technical, it's still a Lance. I dropped the name Bulldog. Mm -hmm. And this is a repainted one. Though all they were standing in the yard, you just prayed over them because these windsplitters are called today. It's normally it's blank, like you see it on this tractor. So they did not bother to. Mounted away and remounted, it just sprayed the green color. <laughs> we just scratch it. We tried it once. You can scratch it with blue underneath. And then you see 1960, when also the, the large event in Dallas was introducing the new generation of power. Here it was called the tractor of the future. Uh, we have these new designed tractors now, no uh, vertical machines anymore, uh, horizontal engines anymore, but vertical engines uh, in line. And on the first uh, two series, we still had John Deere Lanz written on it. I'm guessing you don't see many of these anymore, do you? Yeah, you see. You, you, do you? Yeah, they're probably almost as uh, popular still, and uh, you can see them quite often, like, like you see old Pop and Johnnies in, in the States or Canada. Oh, wow. Well, they're not exactly in the historical order because the blue one here should be <laughs> should be rather here. <laughs> that was the last uh, Lanz Bulldog that was uh, released to the public by Lanz before Junior purchased it in 56, the 40 um, horsepower model. And it was also the first one that came with um, hydraulics. So the Lanz Bulldog was not very modern anymore after the war. It was a one-cylinder, two-stroke engine, uh, no hydraulic uh, lift on it. And this one got a hydraulic lift. So with the 6000 series we launched the frame tractor and for a couple of years we built both structured and frame tractors. And this was the last one to leave the line without a frame that only about 40 hours on the frame It never really worked. Why is it cool? So that means it did not have a radiator, it just steamed out. So yeah, it, it, you needed about every hour you needed a bucket of water to replenish the motor. <laughs> <laughs> and you have one uh, power shift gear because you have a high low. It's not like on the 4020 that you have eight power shift gears, right. yeah. but you have high low. And then you have uh, eight synchronized gears. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. How much yes. fun is it to work here? It's, it's really fun. Well, it's really fun being here. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's great to, to work here with all these um, um, historical tractors and all the with the modern uh, tractors for sure. I think he's coming back. Let's get him yeah. back. This is so cool. So 
what got you into tractors? Uh, that I was I was born in, into the business. Okay. Yeah, because my, my uh, father, he's a uh, farmer by profession, and he started already to work with for me. Okay. And so because it's always one son gets, gets a farm and the other thing to uh, another big people. And so I was uh, starting to work with for you. Well, we're very grateful for you taking your time today. Yeah, you're welcome. Like this. this is very special. <laughs> This is awesome. Did you know the horse grow into tractors? They did not. It was converted to tractors, but they did not work very well with tractors. Then the tractors were faster than the horses, and this is a ground drive. That means you throw the potatoes too far away. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something you do. <laughs> Shut up. He's just driving it around like it's nothing. <laughs> the best parking spot in the world. It is. It just drive right in. This is like in the game. In the back are uh, different type of couplers. So it doesn't matter which kind of tractor we have to pull out from anywhere. We can put that here in the snout of the tractor and couple it. If that is not sufficient, we have different type of other couplers here mounted directly on, on this uh, rig. So there's a toolbox. If you follow me, what we have here is an uh, air pressure system. If there is some uh, diesel needed, we can help with that as well. Uh, push that button and the pump is running. So we have air pressure in the front. We have these, what is called, uh, jumper cable in the front. And we need that additional weight if we lift up a tractor in the back. We need additional weight at the front so that we can uh, go off the line, for instance. Die Tracker. Ich habe versucht, den zu starten mit unserem 6 4 draußen, aber der hat nicht genug Mass. Der Peter geht nicht an. <laughs> That's a big weight. Yep. Because when, when, you, when, you, when a tractor does not crank on the end of the assembly line, we raise it with the front axle, so you have to counterbalance it. So yeah. you have the front axle, uh, or you lift the nose of the tractor with the hitch of this tractor to get them out of the building, and then we move it with a tow bar wow. yeah, on the factory ground. Job was cool. You thought your job was cool. Just because John might be even cooler. <laughs> 